Hey, we're Emily and Danny, and we've been traveling by van all the way from Alaska to here in Santiago, Chile with our cat, Graham, and our dog, Sombrita. We've been stuck waiting for our van to be fixed, but today is the day we can head out once again. Big day here, last day in the apartment, last day with this view. I'm gonna miss it because living in a van is a lot harder. <laughs> it's kind of bittersweet going back in the van because we don't have a completely functional van still. The propane system, something that's gotta be fixed still. But most importantly, we have to go get a sensor installed in the engine. Haven't been able to find a, a really good mechanic to do it yet. So it's a bit bittersweet going back to the van with it being in its current state. But you know what, it can drive a lot better than when we came. Transmission solid. There's just about three or four nagging issues that we really want to get resolved before we leave this area. Still, I just can't wait to get out of the city into a new place. It's time to move on. So let's go pack up everything. This is gonna be a lot of packing today. <laughs> Oh my gosh, look how much stuff we had in this apartment. Crazy. And this isn't even all of the stuff. We have already brought some stuff down whenever we started to travel with Danny's parents. But I think we packed everything up in bags, so it should be an easy uh, trip up and down a couple of times. It has been a beautiful place to stay the last month, really. I think it really helped my burnout. I feel a lot more excited to travel, a lot less jaded and ready to keep on moving. I always pack things and never think about how heavy they are. <laughs> Let's go. Got the van all packed up here. Lots and lots in here and we still have to unpack everything, unfortunately but it wasn't too hard. I just hauled everything from the apartment down and Danny went to go and get the van. And now we're gonna take the van back to where we had it before, walk back to the apartment and get out of here. We'll be van lifers again so soon. I am back in the van. I took my last shower up at the apartment after cleaning everything, oh my gosh. So much cleaning, but we really want to get our deposit back. And also we want to make sure that this guy keeps on renting to people with pets. Now I'm going to start putting stuff away. Danny is so right. He said two of us in there trying to put stuff away it would be too stressful. I'm going to put stuff away now. He's going to clean a little bit more and double check everything. Well, that's it here for the apartment in Santiago. Yeah, my biggest regret on the time here is that in two months, I didn't work enough. I always have these lofty ideas. I'm gonna finish eight different projects. Uh, I did do an update for two of my apps. And I learned a lot about programming for the virtual reality headsets. Bit of a struggle going back to a van that's not really working right, but the heater's working. And honestly, in the winter, that is probably like the number one point. So. You know, we can be comfortable in the winter. Before we can leave town, we gotta find some mechanics to do a few things. Once we're done with this step, we'll be back to having a great time in the van, seeing new places every day, but it's gonna be okay. Hopefully, we're not really leaving many loose ends here in the apartment. The main question is, the landlord gonna be cool? He said, okay, well, if you're gonna have pets, I wanna put a security deposit. We've been paying just about a thousand a month here, so it's not the end of the world if we don't get it back, but I really want that 500 bucks, you know, especially because the transmission repair was $3,000. And that's the cost it is in the US too. Yeah, a lot of costs as of late, so that's a big plus to going back to the van as well. Should be living on the cheap again, and yet enjoying all that we want to enjoy. But I really got to recommend Santiago. I think if there's any one place we've stopped where it felt like we could stay here, I think it's Santiago, Chile. So yeah, take one last look around, make sure didn't leave anything plugged in or whatever, and leave the keys and get out of here. Oh wait! <laughs> Ride the BMX back to the van. See how Emily's got it all put together for us to start our new life. 
This time we fully expect to take the van all the way to the bottom of the Pan American Highway before we ever stop again. All right, well, uh, doing pretty good here. I got all the stuff put away that I can. I even hung up the lights, so I hope Danny feels a little bit better with it being nice and clean. I think he's a little bit more apprehensive and upset about leaving the apartment. I'm pretty excited to continue on, but I can understand that going from having this nice apartment into the van again when the van's still not 100% functioning is pretty stressful for him. Whatever it is. Hey babe. Welcome back to van life. I'm gonna put up our one souvenir we've got here in Santiago. <laughs> we don't got a lot of room in the van, but this is it. From Santiago to Esquile to our home. Well, we got everything all put away here, as much as we can for tonight at least. Yeah, first thing first tomorrow is heading to the mechanic, so we better get some sleep here and we'll see you guys tomorrow. slept in the spot that the van was without us this whole time and it was kind of fun to wake up and think for a split second like where am I again <laughs> we are hoping to get a bunch of stuff done to the van today so let's try and complete our first task here heading over to get an oil change we already got two things done today we got an oil change first place we tried did it so that's great and then we just got some water and we have a new unique way of getting water lately and it's been <laughs> seeing a water truck at a building with all of the jugs in the back, asking them, hey, can we buy a couple of those? And then saying, sure thing. So yeah, that's what we've been doing lately. It's pretty funny, because they're kind of like, what? We may have found a mechanic that can do this job. I've spoken with two today that said, Oh, I think I could do that, but then they didn't have room for this size of a vehicle. The way I found this one was looking at uh, Jeep Repair Shop. Our engine is in Jeep Grand Cherokee. It's also in the Ram 1500. These guys sound pretty confident. They knew exactly what I was talking about when I said, Oh, the oil pressure sensor, it's inside of the engine. I've had to argue with a few places about that, where it is. This is something I've been researching for months. Now we just gotta find somebody that can do it! So we're heading to the mechanic, but he doesn't know that we're in a camper van yet. He doesn't know we're living in here, so he thinks that we're just dropping it off for the night. It's gonna be kind of awkward that we're gonna actually be sleeping there. <laughs> <laughs> so we found the mechanic here. They said pull it right in. Wow, I just started messaging these guys today, so we really lucked out here. They're super knowledgeable. They have all the right Mopar parts, uh, Moog, um, parts that we've bought ourselves. And the guy thinks uh, he had a, the perfect scanner for this vehicle, and he said, it seems like the sensor's okay, just how it's connected was connected badly, or maybe when they closed the thing. Um, it pinched a wire or something. They think they're gonna be able to do it today, which is insane. Still haven't talked about the price, but uh, yeah. So we just gotta wait for one vehicle to get pulled out and then we're gonna pull in and get this uh, done. So, woof. Well, good job, babe. <laughs> wow. It'll be one thing checked off your list that you've been stressing about. Yeah, these are our guys from now on, I think. I'm gonna tell them all our other problems. <laughs> um, he said he can put in that coolant reservoir once it cools down. Okay. So... I love how much baggage we come to the <laughs> mechanic with. We're yeah. like, this, 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 this. <laughs> Please. <laughs> We've had the engine light on for a long time saying that this sensor was bad, but we had to wait until my mom came down to bring us a new sensor. break from the mechanics. Emily, what is that? Venti burger. Sushi burger. Oh yeah, that's right. Sushi Veggie burger. sushi burger. <laughs> 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 the 
Thanks to Google Maps reviews. Really nice. What's that like? It's like a burger. No, it's like sushi. They go in your hand and it's fried. It's super good. <laughs> Okay, and now this is with the new sensor. Oh, mucho menos. Zero, zero punto treinta y nueve. So here's the intake and exhaust manifolds, and you might as well change these gaskets since I have them. While we're here waiting for the mechanics, we decided to do a little project here since we had another one of these empty fruit hammocks. We had this one before hanging up over there, but we decided it constantly hits the wall and the poor bananas were getting bruised. So we just hung it up here today. We wanted to get this area less cluttered and also whenever we pull the container, the water container, whenever we're filling it, we're worried that it was hitting stuff and that's the reason why it broke. And it fits perfect. Honestly, just sitting here at the mechanics is really stressful and rough. I'm just gonna take a little break, go into the virtual reality, <laughs> play my little game here. I could be anywhere in the world, you know? <laughs> So if that looks cool for you, we'll put the link in the description. You can use our link to buy one of these. It's only $400. You don't have to connect it to a computer or anything. And it's a pretty sweet way to get into virtual reality. And also if you get it, you can check out our first virtual reality video of the hike up at the Rainbow Mountains in Peru. Check it out. That was a miracle finding those guys. And we got no engine code for once in the longest time. They knew exactly what they were doing. Man, when I woke up this morning, I was so stressed about this. I didn't think we'd be able to get it done all week, honestly. I just can't really describe how much it gets to me when the van's not working right, because these things just add up. You know, you don't want to let them go any longer. Couldn't have worked out better today. This is just, wow from the bottom to the top. So great. We were a little bit worried about the ending of this little saga with the mechanic because we didn't ask about the price first. And we were kind of like, oh man, they're gonna gouge us. But also, there's no other mechanic that will see us today, so maybe we'll just take it or whatever, it's fine. So yeah, once we got the bill, it was only 150,000 Chilean pesos. And right now it's about one to a thousand. So 150 bucks for an entire day's work is just absolutely crazy to me. We put it on iOverlander for the next travelers to find a very reputable place. to the propane guy and we have an appointment with him and hopefully he'll be able to figure out what's wrong with the propane tank or find a solution for us. The reason we are seeing a propane guy in the first place is the fire is going on and then eventually dying out like every time we use our stove. Can you fix the propane tank, Grammy? Graham's on the job. He gave up. Don't have good news. 
This propane guy thinks our tank is no good anymore, but he doesn't know why, and he just wants to switch us over to a Chilean tank, but doesn't know how. But yeah, the problem is threads are different. His threads here let's go to the left for the propane system. His regulator from the tank drops the pressure to low pressure. Different systems that don't work together in multiple ways. So, I mean, we did get a little bit of dirty water out of this. Ooh, that smell like propane. On the bright side, we still have no engine codes coming up here. So we went to a propane tank refill center. It's lleno de gasolina. We had a revelation. Turns out somebody put gasoline in our propane tank. Wow, I was able to drain like a ton of liquid out of here. They don't think it's gasoline per se. Some kind of thing is not supposed to be in there for sure. Maybe tonight I'll uh, redo all the stuff that the other guy undid today. <laughs> You know, this has a safety valve here. So I have this adapter opening the safety valve. And then this here, obviously you have to open. There's really not much coming out, but if you flip it. Oh yeah, so he must've cleaned it out a little more. So when we went to that guy, he took apart the entire stove and, which was super annoying because now Danny had to redo the whole thing and he charged us basically to make a mess. But anyways, <laughs> so Danny's got it all back put together and yeah, we'll show you guys what it looks like. So this is inside of our suburban dove. Basically the guy took off this piece and this piece. So now Danny's got it all Tefloned up. The guy just asked how many liters, so he's definitely gonna fill our tank, which is awesome. Um, hopefully this whole propane situation is solved as soon as he fills that tank and we hook it up. Our registration is up this month. Danny's already renewed it, but obviously getting your stickers delivered to Chile is kind of hard. So I'm peeling off the stickers <laughs> because I don't want the cops to pull us over. They don't even have stickers here at all. So it's probably gonna look normal, but you can kind of tell that I peeled them off. And it also might help with the border, so that's good. <laughs> all right, well, this is a big moment here. Since I redid all the, the Teflon and everything, is I'm gonna hook this up. We're just gonna open the line, the tank, and we're gonna see if uh, there's any leaks. How you do that is you can put some soapy water on. I've kind of got the soap ready with dish soap. I'll put that on the regulator area first, and we'll just make sure there's no bubbles then you know there's no leaks. Then I'll probably open up the stove and do the same underneath there. It's a, a good step, then we'll be set, solid. So, we know there's no leaks down in there. So now I'm gonna take this off. The line is open down there. So I'm gonna put some more soapiness here. All the joints that I did. No bubbles. No bubbles. Yeah. Ooh, I really hope it works. <laughs> okay, let's test it out. Oh my God! Flames look great, nice and blue. When the tank was like weird, it was uh, coming out blue still at high altitude because whatever liquids in there had more uh, of a pressure differential to leak out vapors. But now that we got all the liquid out, it's looking really good. And uh, that's crazy. That's all we needed to do. I was so worried we'd need a new tank. We'd need some kind of a crazy system that was gonna be really hard to find but we're good to go. Oh, nice. That's a big win. So one big indicator that something was definitely wrong is that whenever we would get it filled in the beginning, you would turn it off at the valve, it would stay on for another five, 10 seconds because there was so much pressure that's in the tank. And that's what it just did. And before it only, it wouldn't do that. Even though we had just got it refilled, it would turn off immediately as soon as we turn it off at the valve. So yeah, if there's something that's going differently, definitely start researching it as soon as something goes differently. Nobody's fault as much as we were trying to blame someone. It was really just natural occurrence in a tank that's used so often.
transmission has a leak. The guy doesn't want to fix it. But we came to him a week ago and we said we still have a place to live. We're noticing some issues. Can you look it out? They were very dismissive. Yeah. And now we either have to rent a place. Yeah, so we're gonna go to another place anyways. Hopefully he can figure it out today or tomorrow or... But with the other guy, it would have been free. But if we have to rent a hotel, it'll be more expensive to rent a hotel than it is to maybe fix it with this other guy, so. I just don't know, even if we take it back to these other guys for seven days, are they gonna fix it correctly this time? Right. And this guy, he said, Oh yeah, come on over, I'll take a look now, which is just incredible. Yeah, so this other transmission place, who we wanted to use previously, very nice, very knowledgeable. They think it's a like an O-ring that goes between the transmission and the engine. And, and they have a place right around the corner where the van fits. They said during the repair, we can stay in the van. They said they can take it apart today. Yeah, it's not the easiest, it's not the, not pain free but it's a solution and it's a better solution than the one offered under guarantee so morning the guy last night was working until 10 to get that done and then he said hey let's all go for a cheeseburger and I said I want to invite you that's how you say in Spanish I want to treat you to something I'm like I invite you Te invito. this morning they found the leak so stoked he took the transition out last night and they just wheeled it over to the shop and at the shop there's a whole bunch of these donut looking things right on the other side of this donut is where the leak is they have seemed to have found the problem already that was the spot that they predicted it was leaking from the start so i really have a lot of confidence in this shop anyway i can take us over to the shop and we'll go see what's going on with the transmission unfortunately this repair was super expensive a thousand us dollars so we're bummed but they fix the problem quickly and without false diagnosing like we've been accustomed to we're stoked to show you guys Van Life Chile next time. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to see what the real Chile looks like. Thanks so much. See ya.